Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Boomer Bus, your home for NFL Draft Talk. I'm your host, Terry, and we are here. It is 2018 NFL Draft season time. Uh, this is the very first episode on this Boomer Bus channel. Uh, the second iteration, I might add, started out in a different podcast form, but now on YouTube. Um, so yes, I want to do an episode to kick it off talking about the behind the scenes, the what I do as far as how I evaluate drafts and all that fun stuff. Um, and then of course, as we kick into high gear, there'll be episodes throughout the draft season covering a number of topics, definitely going over my rankings and all those things as I continue to evaluate. So, uh, yes, that, that kind of leads me into that first thing about what it is I do, why I do it and all that. So, um, for those who haven't heard me before, not many, cause I haven't done it, uh, this channel a long time, but for those who haven't heard, I, I coach football and coaching high school football for a while. I actually started while I was in college. Um, so it's been almost 10 years for me, um, coaching in various, um, degrees of, um, competition, I should say, but definitely all over the place, clinics, Everything, NFL coaches, college coaches, D1, D2, D3. I know a lot of people sat down, talk a lot of football, learned a lot over the years. And ever since high school, I just really enjoyed the draft process, the idea of team building. And as a coach, evaluating talent is one of the, um, my areas of strength in the area that I think most coaches should be strong at. So football's football. I always say that. I'll probably have a number of cliches or phrases. That's just what coaches do. So from high school to the NFL, football is football. There's certain skill sets that you need and certain attributes, and it comes out on tape. Tape never lies. So with that being said, um, I will tell you, this is not the place for mock drafts. If, if you're here for mock drafts, uh, you could turn it off. I'm not going to waste your time. I don't do mock drafts. And honestly, it started out that way. It started out like most places during drafts so we can predict what the picks are going to be and do mock drafts and see if I'm right. And quickly, I realized that's not really what I wanted out of this process. And it's also a waste of time. It is futile to try to do mock drafts because you can't anticipate trades and all those different things. It's a reason why any quote unquote expert you watch, they don't like mock drafts like Mel Kuyper, Mike Mayock, all those people. If you listen to them, they don't like mock drafts. They do them because their job tells them they have to. Uh, Mike Mayock has a nice setup where he only has to do one a year now. And it's like the big reveal because they don't tell you they're stupid. There's no reason to do mock drafts. But I'm not here to talk about them. So once I realized I want to do that and I realized, okay, I'm actually more here so I can know players in the league and that if I continue to do this and I do it to um, with a level of fidelity that there's going to be a time where like 90% of the league, I'm going to know most of those players. And I say we're creeping to that area. I mean, I've always like knowing players and what college they went to and things about them. And I can say that a good chunk of the league, I can tell you where they came from and know their backdrop. So that's cool. I'm kind of realizing what I set out to do. So anyway, what do I do? Um, the way I go through the draft is, uh, in a couple phases. Uh, I would say about five phases. Um, right off the top, I'll tell you, I'm not a big college football fan. Pro is my favorite football, of course. So, um, I don't watch college football, uh, like a diehard. I will say that recently I've been getting into a little more college football with the playoffs and whatnot, or if I happen to catch a game with somebody, but I don't watch it closely. So when it comes to draft time, which is round now, the very first thing I do is I have to gather information on who are the prospects. And I start with the seniors because the seniors are the ones that are guaranteed going to go into the draft. And then, of course, the juniors, the underclassmen, they'll go in maybe later. So I know you get people that uh, declare to the draft early, but when that um, deadline comes, there's always players that 
declared, but end up, you know, going back to school. So for me, I don't touch any underclassmen until after the deadline, which I believe is like the 18th or 16th. They move it around a few times in January. Um, so prior to that, I usually don't start until after the bowl season is done. But of course, with the playoffs, it's now the championship, whatever. So this year, I think I'm going to still start when the playoffs start just to kind of get a head up. But I, like I said, I sit down. I kind of go through a number of different uh, databases and places, see who they rank as top seniors. And then I take the ones that are in common that I know are high ranked and I start looking at them first. And it's very uh, quick sneak peek. It's not anything in depth. It's more so just trying to get a feel for the type of talent. And then after the deadline uh, to declare for the draft, then I look at, okay, who are all the top prospects? And I kind of do the same thing the first day. Uh, it's really a quick overview. What's this, uh, talent level like in this draft? Or what, what are we looking at? Is it lineman heavy, D lineman heavy, offense, defense, quarterback heavy? Who's the, you know, position? What's the top level like? All those different things. And just to give myself an idea. After that, I go into phase two and I hit the ground running. Once I uh, the deadline passes and I do a little preview, I hit the ground running. I start out position by position and I start um, basically I'll do anybody that has up to a third round grade, depending on the depth of the position. So there's certain positions that just don't have a lot of people so I could watch more. Um, but usually most positions I'll go up to third roundish, like something around that area. And, um, I'll watch those top prospects and I'll evaluate them. I usually, I do start with offense, go to defense, usually start with O line and then work my way up. Um, and I do go tackle guard center, all that stuff. So after that, after the first round of evaluations of all the positions, uh, that usually takes me a good chunk. The, the majority of everything is in the first round of evaluations. And then round two comes around. And by that time, where uh, I should be done by the combine, I'm usually just finishing defense round one by the combine. But if I'm doing, you know, a good pace, I'll be done by the combine. And round two is where we're starting to get measurables. Like I said, because of combine, senior bowl, all that. We're starting to uh, get more tape on guys that weren't available before. So that's one little drawback is that you'll have guys that are top prospects, but they just don't have a lot of tape to begin with. And so I have to skip them, unfortunately, and come back because I don't watch a person unless they have three games that I can watch. Uh, because I want to see the consistency of their skills over different opponents. And so if they don't have that, I'll wait to round two when they update uh, the tape. Then after that, that takes a while. Um, I start uh, phase three where I start grading them and giving them, uh, you know, their ranking, not ranking, but prospects. So I go uh, one through five star. Five stars, usually a potential, you know, pro bowler, somebody that can step in and make a difference right away. Uh, and then we go four stars, somebody with really good talent um, that will need a certain supporting cast or uh, what you call it, a coaching staff, things around them. And then three, which is middle road, two, which is low talent, but possibly can contribute. And then one most likely not going to make it. So uh, after I do that, then we start getting right towards the draft where I'm doing my final list and all that. Um, I, I grade the position groups. I grade the draft class as a whole. I start doing uh best fit, which takes a long time. So I, I write out the best fit as far as teams and schemes and coaches and all that that will work best for this player. And yeah, so that's pretty much the uh, thing I go through. And then number uh, phase five is just putting the final stamp on it all. Then I sit back and enjoy the draft. So 
<laughs> it's it's a long process. It feels like a whole year sometimes. It feels like it goes on forever. It's day and night, like really putting in hours to watch this stuff. So, uh, but it's fun, man. I love the draft. So that's kind of um how I get it done. Now, there's a number of things that uh concepts that you'll hear me say that I always um believe in, and it it. it enforces my uh, evaluation and I can't, you know, name them all right now, but you, you'll definitely hear that. One thing I will say, um, as we go into a section or a segment, whatever that I want to do with each episode, uh, is that you can't give a grade to a draft class the night after or the night of. And we see that because it's cool. People like it. Social media. Yeah, what was that? That was an A. Or the next day ESPN. That was a B. That was a C plus. You can't do that. <laughs> These people haven't even stepped on the field at all. You can talk about what value you got for, you know, what they were rated. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what they were rated. It matters what they do on the field. And so I'll always tell you, you cannot dra- grade a draft class until three years after. Once they've been in the league for three years, then you can make a real uh, grade. So that leads me to the segment called the real grade, where I look at a team's draft class from three years prior. And then we look at kind of what the grade was. So today I'm doing the Arizona Cardinals, just randomly pick them looking at the 2015 draft. So their first pick was DJ Humphreys at number 24 left tackle out of Florida. Um, now he hasn't, he didn't start this year or he started a few games, but he wasn't their main starter. It was more so because of injury, um, from what I believe. And he, uh, was a very raw athletic tackle coming out. A lot of people said natural left. They actually end up trying him at right and then bouncing the left and just kind of bouncing around. But you can see through his three years, it never stuck to the point where he became a consistent starter. So your first round picks, not a starter. Your second round pick, uh, Marcus Golden out of Missouri, who I thought was, um, I thought he was really underrated going into the draft, uh, because you had Shane Ray coming out in that same draft, but, uh, the Cardinals took a chance on the second round, which I was surprised about. And he was injured this year, but had 12 and a half sacks last year. So he had uh, his first year, he really proved to be a legit pass rusher in their rotation. Third round, David Johnson out of Northern Iowa. What can you say about that? That, that, that? Now, of course, he was hurt this year, but so far, a fantasy monster, home run king. Like, I, I don't know how great of a runner he is. I know he is ultra dynamic and he's just really good with his vision and does what he does. So, uh, I give him that, but, uh, you can't deny that he's one of the uh, top most coveted backs in the league and to get him in the third round, which was understandable because it's a running back, A, and B, he came from small school. So, and then you got, uh, Rodney Gunther, who was a fourth round pick. Defensive tackle, who's part of the rotation, not a starter, but he rotates in. You got Shaquille Riddick, who's not in the league anymore. Um, you got, uh, he's a fifth round pick. You got JJ Nelson, who's a fifth round pick, who had flashes with the Cardinals. Um, you know, every now and then you, you, uh, saw like, man, you know, he could really be something with Carson Palmer, but he never really cracked that top, uh, spot. Um, so, you know, it wasn't too, too good for him. And then you got Gerald Christensen, uh, seven round tight end, who's no longer in the league. So we look at this draft class, uh, pretty small, less than 10 players. Your first round pick, uh, at, uh, at this point, I would, I wouldn't say bust. I, I'm really light on using that, but you, he's trending towards bust just because he hasn't produced for you. And when he has been on field, he doesn't look good. Marcus Golden, that's a big hit. Uh, he's probably your best pass rusher next to Chandler Jones. David Johnson, ultra hit. Uh, but the rest are just contributing. I would give this, uh, draft class a B minus if I had to grade it. Um, looking, you know, where we are now, Marcus Golden and David Johnson are going to be centerpieces to the team. 
Um, and JJ Nelson is going to help contribute if you bring him back, which I think you would. That's a pretty good receiving or uh, a cohesive one. And then you losing Larry. So you really talking about three main key pieces out of that group. Um, yeah, I would definitely say B minus. So anyway, uh, that is the episode for now. Hopefully you got a little peek into. Well, you're going to be getting later and it won't be, you know, so much behind the scenes. It'll be more talking about prospects later. Uh, but if you enjoy it, please go to the comment section, uh, get in on the discussion. Tell me what you think about the draft. What do you think about your team? Uh, tell me what you're excited for. All those good things. Please share this around. All fans are welcome. Uh, thumbs up, subscribe and, uh, thank you for listening. Boom bus.